Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to the Ramadan Dua Accelerator Day 25 Day 25 Today's verse that we're going to be going over is actually not a dua per se But it's one of my favorite verses in the Quran For the reason that it shows us the attitude that we should have about dua And I think, I actually really do think it's going to blow your mind Because when I first learned out, I was like, this is a really powerful way To look at the way we spend time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua is recited by Ya'qub alayhi salam and it is found in Surah Yusuf. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qala innama ashku batti wa huzni ila Allahi wa alam min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. Before I read the translation, I'm actually going to read the translation of the verse right before this one. So right before this one, the translation goes, They said, by Allah, you will not cease to remember Yusuf until you lose your health or even your life. Then what I read was, he replied, I complain of my anguish and sorrow only to Allah, and I know from Allah what you do not know. What's the context of this? What does it mean? Well, this is found in Surah Yusuf, which is the surah about the story of Prophet Yusuf a.s. And Ya'qub salam, being a prophet, has such immense love for his son Yusuf. I mean, it was very clear, even to his other sons, that Yusuf salam, was his favorite son. When it happened that the incident happened where his Ya'qub's sons attempted to kill Yusuf by leaving him in a well, Ya'qub, knowing that this was actually not the truth of what they said, that he was eaten by a well, understood that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says he was going to strive to have sabr and jameel, a beautiful patience. And that doesn't take away from the pain. And I think what is really powerful about Ya'qub alayhi salam's story as it relates to Yusuf is it really humanizes grief and emotion, right? Pro uh, prophet Ya'qub is a prophet. And yet he still feels sadness. He still feels grief. He finds himself incredibly saddened over the loss of his son. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what happened to him. He doesn't know if he's alive or dead, if he's safe or harmed. And his people tell him, by Allah, are you going to keep like reminding yourself of Yusuf salam, until you end up losing your health or your life? As in the grief drives you to get so unwell that you pass away. You know, there are occasions where people try to tell us things to perk us up, but sometimes they're not saying what we need to hear. So in essence, they're telling him, like, move on, right? Your son's gone. In their mind, he's probably been eaten by a wolf like his brothers say but move on and Yusuf uh, and Yaqub salam's response is absolutely beautiful he says I complain of my anguish and sorrow only to Allah and I know from Allah what you do not know I complain of my sorrow and my grief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reason I love this mindset around dua so much is that I remember during my healing journey when I was going through it like going through it and so often I felt like people did not understand and it's not because they didn't want to understand they just couldn't it's very hard to understand how trauma works and the anguish that it puts a person in and so it felt like I didn't have anyone that I could comfortably share with and even if I did want to share with one thing that held me back was I don't want other people to see me as weak that's a whole can of worms on its own but I had this reputation of resilience that I had built up and I didn't want to damage that and then again at the end of the day there are people that often as much as they love you hearing the same thing over and over again might tire them out and then you feel bad and you feel like a burden for having to lean on them when I heard this what it did for me is it replaced a lot of my fears because it reminded me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never gets tired of hearing our complaints, never gets tired of our pain, never gets tired of hearing us come to him and ask of him. And you can turn your dua time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically into a therapy session of sorts where you just pour your heart out. And the thing about that is it's not just a venting session where you feel good at the end, but it's actually a productive action plan. Because when you are complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is still considered dua. You're calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it may be through that that he changes, even if you don't specifically ask for relief from the situation, that he changes the situation so it is not weighing on you as much. Now, I need to preface all of this by saying 
and that this right here is the highest level of patience. A beautiful patience that which was described by Yaqub is understood by scholars as having so much patience that the only one you complain to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not human beings. Now, does that mean that we should be encouraging people to not talk things out, to not seek help from other people? No, mental health is such an important thing to discuss. This is the highest level. Not everybody is going to have the highest level of patience, just like not everybody is going to have the highest level of deen. Are you praying to Hajjud every single night and reading a juz of Quran every single day outside of Ramadan? Probably not. If you feel like you are feeling a weight on you that's pulling you down and you need help from other people, then understand that those other people are actually a risk to you. They're a resource to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in front of you, whether it's a mental health professional, a coach, a friend, a loved one. See them as your risk and as part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's answer to your du'as. But also practice this time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you complain of your anguish to him solely. I used to have a friend who I remember she very often didn't I, I would come to her a lot with um, things that I was struggling with and she didn't come back to me. And I remember one day I was like, am I bothering her? Or does she like not see me as someone who could give good advice? And one day she was opening up to me that her sister was saying the same thing. And she said, it's not that I don't want to come to people, but I'd rather complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I was like, that's, that truly is such a beautiful perspective. So I hope that this reflection helps you guys. If you liked this video, then please hit like, comment below. And if you're not subscribed, as always, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.